Hi, I'm Jennifer Doyle with InspectPoint, and today I'm going to show you how to log into your iPad. Now, if you do not have the InspectPoint app downloaded on your instance or on your iPad yet, what you'll want to do is, is make sure that you go to the App Store. You'll search for InspectPoint, two words, and then you'll download our app. Our app looks like a dark blue background with a sprinkler head on it, so just so you know which one you're clicking on. Um, what you'll basically do is just click the download button and wait for it to download. Now, once the app is downloaded onto your iPad. The next thing you're going to want to do is, is log into your app. Now there's going to be three things that you need in order to log in. That is going to be your company code, it's also going to be your username, and it's going to be your password. Now this is information that you will need to get from your office admin, as the uh, company code is something that is set up by us and they will know, and also the username and password is something that they've created for you. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to take your iPad, and once you have this information, start adding it in on this login screen. So now what we will do is, is we'll go ahead and we will add our uh, username and then we will just add our password as well. Once we're done, we're going to click log in. Now, if you are not connected to the internet, if you type something incorrectly, maybe the company code, the username, the password, everything is very case sensitive. So you will get an indication that something went wrong. Um, in this case, it's something that I typed incorrectly. So I'm just going to go back in and I'm going to retype in my password to make sure that I am good. And now once I am, I will be brought into my login screen and from here we can start seeing some information um, for our inspections and we can get started with the inspection process. So now that we are logged into our iPads, what we're going to want to do is um, before we start our inspections, there's some things that you can, can see, um, some things that you can click on for more information and I'm just going to kind of walk through those um, before we start our first inspection. So now, regardless of the type of inspection that you are doing, whether it's sprinkler, alarms, extinguishers, clean agent, dampers, doors, whatever it might be, all of this is going to be exactly the same um, for all of those various inspections. So what I want to do is, is from this screen, I'm going to start on the left hand side over here and that I'm going to click on the future tab. So now, regardless, like I said, of the type of inspection you are doing, you will always see this information. Your future tab, that far right column um, of those three columns, that is where we will display inspections that have been assigned to you, have a date and time, and are 14 days out from today's date. Um, I guess from anywhere to 14 days out from today's date. Um, so in this case, I see an inspection that is scheduled for me um, just a couple of days out. Um, if I had multiple inspections here that were assigned to me a little bit further out, and I came into this tab and I saw them, I will always see them in date and time order. And then if my inspections are on the same date and time, I would see them in alphabetical order. When it becomes the date of my inspection, what I'm going to do is, is I'm mostly going to work out of this schedule tab, right? I may want to know what's coming up, so I'll look at my future tab, but I really want to look at my schedule tab. Now, one of the very first things you're going to want to do every time you log into your iPad, um, or any time you open your app, um, you are going to want to pull to refresh while you are in this scheduled column. So you're basically holding down and pulling and then what's on my screen right now, that little icon spinning, that means that it's loading inspections. And you can hold this for anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds as long as you're connected to the internet and let it go. And now when you do that, you're moving your inspections from your future tab to your schedule tab and you're loading anything that may have been scheduled for you later in the day, the day before, that wasn't currently in your future tab. So on your schedule tab, you are always going to see inspections that are scheduled for you for that day. If I had inspections that I have not yet sent back to the office, they will remain in this schedule tab until I send those back to the office. So it's kind of important to know um, if you see an inspection that's been sitting there for maybe two weeks, maybe you just either haven't sent it back to the office or it's currently in progress, but it will remain in this column until 
you send it back to the office, in which case it will automatically move to this completed tab. So now on this iPad right here, I haven't sent any inspections back yet, so I don't see anything. But every inspection will move from tab to tab to tab based on actions you're taking, whether it's a pull to refresh or it's sending an inspection back to the office. While we were are over in this three column area, I want you to navigate down towards the bottom part of that, in that three column and click on the eye icon down at the bottom. Now this eye icon, when you tap it, it's going to have three things pop up. One is about inspect point, the other one is help, and the third one is settings. Now I'm just going to point a few things out to you. Um, these are just sort of settings if you would like to know where certain things are, or you want to lock your, your iPad into one specific rotation so it doesn't keep rotating every time you move it. But if you click on about inspect point, um, it is going to show you on a little pop-up what version of the app you are on. And now it's very important that you try to stay as up-to-date on the app versions um, that we have available. So that way you have access to all of the features that are available, but you also, um, you know, if there's any fixes that have come out, you have access and they've been repaired on your, on your version of your iPad as well. So you always just want to make sure if you do, are getting those alerts or if someone in the office is telling you to update, that you do update when you are at a good spot to do so. If you do need to call support or you need to, you sent an email to us and you need assistance, one thing that we may ask you is, well, what version of the app are you on? And this is where you would find that. Clicking on the icon, clicking on about and spec point, and then you'll click and we will get that um, version from you. Um, you'll click OK to get that little pop-up box out of the way. And then if you click on settings, I kind of mentioned, you know, hey, if you or moving your iPad around, it may kind of move with you, right? The iPad is, is set up and designed to sort of move the way you are moving. It thinks it's being helpful, but sometimes it's not. So if you prefer to hold your iPad in a horizontal manner, maybe you prefer to type this way, or maybe you have one of those nice straps that comes around your neck and it leaves your hands free. Only problem is when you go to take a photo, the screen's going to rotate on you. So if you want to lock your screen into place, is you'll want to click on that settings tab and you'll click disable auto rotate mode. This will lock your instance and lock your iPad into that horizontal view for you. What you'll do is, is you'll just click save and you'll move on out. Now one thing you might have noticed up there too is something about a socket mobile. That is a different video and we will go over how you would set up and sync your socket mobile, which is an external barcode scanner that we use if you do not want to use the iPad camera to scan barcodes. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tap that eye icon to just scoot those little guys right out of the way and get those three columns or get those three options off my screen. And before we move over to seeing our inspection information, go ahead and tap on to that little map icon that is right next to that eye icon. And when you do that, you might see a map appear. Now basically what you're seeing is a pin drop or a little pin on the map for the location of all of your inspections. Now in my instance right here, I have quite the distance to travel for these inspections, but it's essentially if I tap onto that pin, it'll show me the building name. And if I tap onto that building name, I'm going to, it's automatically gonna open up for me um, my Apple Maps because I'm using an Apple device. So I can, of course, click on the directions and it'll take me there for my current location. Um, and then to get back to the app, what you'll do is you'll tap inspect point in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. It's very small. It's a back arrow and then inspect point. And then to get rid of that map, you'll just go ahead and you'll tap done. Now, now that we are back on this screen um, and we've looked at all the various tabs and locations that you can click on over on that left hand side, let's go ahead and select our inspection that we're going to get started with. So when we select it, it's going to turn gray. Now, if you're holding your iPad similar to the way it is on my screen, you'll notice that you can see some information, but the three columns are really kind of in the way. What you're going to want to do is you're going to tap over on the right hand side into one of those gray areas and that will get rid of it for you or what you can do is just sort of scoot 
the um, app and just sort of swipe left to get those out of the way. I'm going to leave mine up on there um, just in case you want to leave them up there. Um, but basically, once you either get the columns out of the way or you leave the columns up, um, what you will see on the right hand side is the information for the inspection. So before you start the inspection, you'll want to just sort of take a look at some of the information that's been sent from the office, things that have been attached to this building by the office. You'll want to take a look at any of the contacts that exist on the building, and then you'll want to take a look at any of the notes that have been left for you. So I know that's a lot to look at just before you start an inspection, but I'll kind of break it down for you. So on this right hand side, at the very top, you will see general information. Now on the general information area, you'll see the address and if there was any inspection reference number or building number left for you as well. Underneath that, you will see, based on the type of inspection you are doing, what you are inspecting. So in this case, I am inspecting a uh, pre-action system and a wet system. But if I had fire alarm systems, I would see those fire alarm systems listed. If I was doing extinguishers, I would see those extinguishers listed, etc. Basically, on this screen, it's going to let me know, hey, this is what you're inspecting. And if anything is missing, then what you'll want to do is just call the office before you click inspect. So do make sure that you look at the screen before you start your inspection. Another thing that you might notice on here too is we have some contacts. So if I ever needed to contact anybody, what I can do is, is I can click on their name and up on the screen will appear a pop-up. This pop-up will contain their name, title, phone number, email, anything that's been added in the back end or by the admin in the office for you to see. Um, when you are done, you can click done and it'll get rid of that pop-up box for you. Another thing on here as well is, is you can see any previously generated reports. So by default, we will send the five most recently generated reports and you will see them listed below. Now, if you have internet access, you can tap onto that report and it will open it up for you and you can view the report. To get back to the app, what you will do is, is just in the upper left hand corner, tap that inspect and you're back to your app again. You can also see some um, attachments that were left on the building, right? So these are attachments that maybe the office has loaded for you that they would like you to see out in the field. This might be previous inspections, prior to inspect point, it might be building layouts. So if they're there, go ahead and click on those. And once again, if you're connected to the internet, or you're connected to a Wi-Fi connection, when you click on them, that attachment will appear for you. If you see the notepad icon, um, it'll appear right next to the name, the building name. If you see that as white and you can click on it, you're going to click onto that. And this is where the office will leave notes for you. So this is where if there is information for you as far as access codes or key codes, who you need to talk to, special equipment you need to bring, um, you know, who you need to call to take things offline, um, bring them back online, whoever you need that information and the office will give that to you and put that here in this notepad area. You'll go ahead and you'll just tap that notepad icon to just scoot it back up and get it out of your way. If you come to the building and you do not see that icon illuminated and you try to click on it and nothing's happening, that means that a note has not been left for you um, on the building by the office. However, you should always click on the chat bubble icon next to that notepad as well. So every time before you start an inspection, always click the notepad icon if you can, and always click the chat bubble icon next to it. This is what we refer to as our tech messages area. So technicians, you guys are able to leave messages to one another. It's also a way for you to leave messages to the office, and it is also a way for the office to leave a note to you guys as well. So in here, if you do leave a note, the note will show who left it and when it was left and then display the note. Now this is visible between all inspection types. So if there are multiple technicians doing sprinklers and another one doing fire alarms, etc., these are building wide notes. So they will be seen across all inspections. When you are done, you'll click done. 
when you are ready to start your inspection and only when you are ready to start your inspection can you make sure that everything is on your iPad. Will you click the inspect button in the upper right hand corner and when you do that you are ready to get started with your inspection.